Hello, welcome and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're a first time viewer, I'm not MJ. Yo, and I'm so happy to have you watching this video. If you're a returning subscriber, say yeah, yeah. <laughs> On this channel, I always share content around nursing, lifestyle, travel, vlogs, you know, living in the UK and all sorts of information I believe that you will find really, really helpful like this one. <laughs> so if this kind of content interests you, kindly subscribe to this YouTube channel and turn my post notification bell on so you get notified when I share new videos. Guys, you can tell that I am so excited. Like, I am super elated. You already seen the thumbnail of this video, so you know what this video is about. Ha! I received my letter from the home office. Oh my God. <laughs> I can't shout too much because I'm your baby. I don't want to alert him to my presence here. <laughs> Yo, I'm finally a permanent resident in the United Kingdom after five years. After serving this country for five years, I'm finally a permanent resident. And my letter dropped earlier last week, and I am so I couldn't wait to share this news with you. I'm even I'm here to open this envelope. <laughs> hey, lovers! I've got great news for Nigerian students coming to study in the United Kingdom this september lenfa is giving out 100 boxes of goodies containing nigerian food branded stationaries and lenfa mesh to nigerian students who apply for this so apply to win one of these 100 boxes using the link under this video's description use the lenfa app to send money back home to your loved ones in nigeria and get 15 pounds cash back on your first 100 pounds transaction or more when you use the discount code student and that's not all with lenfi you also get zero transfer fee fast and reliable transaction what are you waiting for go ahead and install the lenfi app now to enjoy this amazing benefit love you Mwah. you're welcome <laughs> I am so so happy that I got to sh finally share this content with you. I've been in the UK, I've been a registered nurse in the United Kingdom for the past five years. Like five years. Yeah, and I call exactly five years in July. But because my um visa had I mean I still have a visa that is still valid to like 2027, 20, I wasn't really in a hurry to make my application for indefinite leave to remain. But eventually, I did this because of our son. We're going to get into the full detail shortly. So make sure you stay with me in this video. <laughs> so in this video, I'll, you know me already, right? You know that I always share. I'll share with you how I applied successfully by myself for this indefinite leave to remain in the United Kingdom as a skilled worker. Okay? As a skilled worker. That's what I'm going to be sharing with you in this video. I'll share with you how to apply for the life in the UK test, how to prepare for this test. You do not need any test book at all. All you need is the link that I'm going to share with you in this video. You can trust me, right? Because I have done it. Okay, so I'll share with you all of that information and even much more in this video. So without wasting much of our time, let us get right into it. By the way, I applied and got my decision within two working days. I went for my appointment on a Saturday, got my decision within two working days. So learn how we're able to do that in this video. July 2019, I made a move to move to the United Kingdom. Not, I know, not that I made the move. I moved to the United Kingdom as a registered nurse, fully sponsored by the United Kingdom by the NHS of course that's the government hospital you know because NHS is funded by the government private is funded by of course private establishment or private organizations yeah so my movement to be work as a nurse in the UK was fully sponsored by the United Kingdom government okay due to every shortage of skilled workers okay so I move in on the tier two I'm telling you this so you can understand why 
I'm sharing this news with you, not just to tell you how to apply for this, but to also share my journey because of course that's part of what I share on this channel. I got to the UK and I've been working as a nurse for the past five years. I came in as a band three nurse, I mean not a band three nurse, as a band three eight care assistant that's where you come in before you have your pain and then the hospital trained me to take my OSCE which is their qualifying examination here in the United Kingdom for you to be, get registered on the Northern and Midwifery Council website on their on their register so once I passed the examination I was then given my pain my license after then I was then moved up the band to become a band five registered nurse. I practiced for uh, about two years as a band five, and then I moved up the band, I applied to become a band six. After that, I also applied after about two years to become a band seven registered nurse. So currently, it's my fifth year in the UK, exactly in July, yeah? And I am a band seven registered nurse and also a permanent resident in the United Kingdom no more visa so we're going to be looking first of all we'll be looking at the benefits of this why are we so excited on the tier 2 visa there are a lot of restrictions you can't do business you can't do personal business self-employment you can't you can't do um you can't do a lot of other jobs you can't take up extra some extra jobs except jobs that are within your visa a lot of restrictions you're not you are not uh you don't have access to public funds you know child care and all of that and you have to keep applying for visa keep applying for visa keep looking for certificate of sponsorship but now with your indefinite leave to remain all of that is gone i want to give you the top five benefits of having your indefinite leave to remain one is now you can live freely in the united kingdom you can live and work freely in the united kingdom there's no more restriction on your visa you no longer need to get a visa on from an employer or a or need for a certificate of sponsorship you can now apply for your citizenship and get your british passport within one year or after a year of getting your indefinite leave to remain status thirdly and that also applies to your child. You can apply for British citizenship for your child and get them British pass. Thirdly, now you can do a business. Before on a skilled worker visa, you are not allowed to do business or self-employment. But what benefit? You now have access to public funds like childcare benefits, which is the one I am <laughs> I'm so looking forward to accessing. And then fifth one, of course, is now you can travel. You're as free as a bird. You can travel easily to a lot of countries to visit on vacation without worrying about visa application status. <laughs> Yo, super exciting, ain't it? <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> Obviously, you, you know, I'm super excited about this. I mentioned earlier that my employer, I gave, I went with my new employer, I applied for a new visa and I also applied and I also got a new certificate of sponsorship which is still valid till 2027 so I was not in a hurry to apply for my indefinite leave to remain even though I qualified since July I applied around August now the reason for this is of course because I still have a valid visa your visa needs to be valid when you're applying for your indefinite leave to remain if your if your visa is expired you will have to renew the visa major reason why I decided to go ahead and make this application was because of my son because now that I have the indefinite leave to remain status to remain in the United Kingdom the settlement in the UK I can my child born in the uk or not born in the uk but my child is born in the uk can now have british citizenship so we can apply for them straight away if you have a child you can apply for them straight away so i'm applying for my child and i also want him to have his british passport as soon as possible so this is how it works in the united kingdom you there is nothing like citizenship by bet. so what i mean is you know like other countries like um, United States, Canada, if you go and give birth in these countries, right, 
your child that you're giving birth to even though you the parent you're not a citizen your child that you give birth to in that country is automatically a citizen in the uk it is different if you are not a citizen or if you don't have a settlement status like indefinite leave to remain in the uk your child that you have given birth to in the united kingdom it will not automatically become a citizen okay but if you did have your indefinite leave to remain status or you have any other form of settlement in the uk maybe you're already a citizen right when you give birth to your child they automatically become a citizen and all you need to do is apply for their passport however in my own case yeah i gave birth to my child before i got my indefinite leave to remain okay so giving birth to my child before my indefinite leave to remain means that i need to apply for my child's British citizenship. I'll make the application separately and then apply for their British passport. Okay, so this video is not about how to apply for um, British citizenship for your child or their passport. In another video, when I do have this British citizenship and passport, I will make sure that I share with you. So make sure you are subscribed to this channel. Okay. So that's another reason why I apply for this. Now let us talk about how to apply for your indefinite leave to remain in the United Kingdom as a skilled worker. There are different ways that you can apply for ILR, there are different um, criteria that you might need to meet. But for this video, it is for skilled workers. That is what I am particularly um, confident about because I have done it. In applying for your ILR, you need to have lived in the United Kingdom for at least five years. You need to meet up with the salary requirement. So, of course, as a skilled worker, you meet up with the salary requirement. So, there's a financial requirement for when you're applying for your indefinite leave to remain. So, you usually need to be paid at least a minimum salary okay so you need to be paid whichever is the highest out of the following either twenty five thousand six hundred per year or 10 pounds per hour or the going rate for the type of work you'll be doing so if the example is being given on the government website but generally as a skilled worker you are under the shortage occupation list so you will naturally qualify to apply for your indefinite leave to remain you are eligible to apply after five years you also do not need to have to be paid twenty five thousand six hundred pounds if you were sponsored for a tier two general visa in one of the following occupation codes okay so all this information is available on the government website you do not have to be confused so guys this is my application so let's do it together so the first question is uh, asking what category you're applying for your ILR and you're going to scroll down and make sure you select the right category in this um, video we are doing the scaled worker tier 2 um, visa and you can see every other category in there and then I select uh, save and continue it really is important that you select the right category okay and then once you're setting of the category you're sure you've picked the right category you save and continue to the next page so the next question is going to be in which migrant category are you applying for your ILR then you're going to select again skilled worker and then you're going to be taken to the page where you need to confirm that your information is correct okay and your employer needs to keep needing you they need to prove that they still need you in your employment so which means that you need to prove your living in the uk for five years you should not have traveled outside of the uk for more than 180 days every visitation that you did outside of the united kingdom you need to provide the proof of it okay so maybe your flight ticket maybe your itinerary you know that has official dates maybe your uh, hotel booking you know you need to in that shows the dates that you left the uk and the dates that you 
go back into the UK, you need to provide this as evidence of your living in the UK for five years. There will also, when you're filling the form, there are also other information that you will need to provide. Secondly, you need to provide the proof um, of your salary. Okay, so now this is where you need to provide your payment, your pay slips, right? There, your pay slips. So if you are working with the NHS, I'll encourage you to install the ESR app. The ESR app enables you to be able to access your pay slip anytime from anywhere. Okay, so you download your pay slip, you download your most recent pay slip, and you also need to provide your bank statement. Your bank statement is going to is going to be used to confirm your pay slip. So the amount that is going into your account must reflect on that bank statement. So for instance, if your pay slip for this month says one four, that statement, that's 1,400, <laughs> I said 400 naira. That 1,400 pounds must reflect in the bank statement that you provide, okay? So you must provide an up-to-date bank statement that reflects how much you received in that month, okay? Now, if you're on maternity leave like me and you're receiving maternity pay, you will need to provide proof of this as well that you're just receiving the maternity pay so you're going to provide your pay slip from the beginning of your maternity yeah of your maternity leave till date and you're also going to provide bank statement to you know to serve as supporting document for this okay so these are the things that you need to provide extra things you need to provide if you're on maternity leave now you also need to then get a thirdly, you then need to get a letter from your employer, which is called a confirmation of employment. This information in that letter. Okay, usually your employer they, need, they know what you want. You, you need to write to your HR if you're on mat leave or go to your HR if you're at work, send an email to them requesting for this letter. Usually they know what to do, but you can easily just you know say state that you need it for. Um, application of indefinite leave to remain okay so these are the major requirements that you're going to provide when you're applying for your indefinite leave to remain and the last major 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 one is of course you need to take the life in the UK tests the life in the UK tests is to test your knowledge of the UK life and their language, okay? The legislation, the laws in the United Kingdom. And this test is, um, it con consists of 24 questions and you need to pass at least 18 of them. It's objective, uh, it's an objective test. Multiple choice questions, right? Yeah, multiple choice questions. 24 questions, you need to pass for you to pass, you need to get at least 18 correct. And you're going to answer these questions under 45 minutes. The cost of this test is 50 pounds. For you to prepare and pass this test, make sure you use this link, okay? Under this link, you will find a list of practice exam tests. This exam, these questions are structured in such a way that they look similar to what you're going to see in your test. The, this, this, the way they have structured the test looks like the way you will see it in your test and it makes you feel like you are in an exam condition. Okay. All you need to do is practice this test for at least three to four times. Okay. Learn the basics and you will be just fine. On my test day, I got into the test and within um, in less than 10 minutes, I was done because I already knew what to prepare for. Uh, well, I was already familiar with the kind of questions that they will ask me. So it was easier for me to pass the test. So prepare well. If you don't prepare, you cannot guess the answers, please. So make sure you use this link that I have provided to prepare for your tests. Applying to take the test, you're going to need to provide a form of email address. You're going to need to provide um, your form of ID, whether your BLP or your passport. You're going to also, of course, provide your debit or your credit card to make payments. <laughs> Those people that don't need to take this test, if you're under 18, you don't need to take this test. And if you are above 65, you don't need to take this test. You also do not need to take this test if you're 
apply for citizenship because once you've taken it for ILR, you don't need to take it again. You just need to take it once, this once. Okay, good. And you don't need English language tests because as a skilled worker, when you were applying for a skilled worker visa, you already took IELTS. Let's go to now apply for your higher lab itself. So once you finish your test, if you pass the test, not less than in less than five minutes from when I finished the test, I already got an email from Life in the UK test. Well, <laughs> from Life in the UK test, yeah. I got an email that confirms that I've passed the test, yeah, and you'll be provided with a reference number. So this reference number is what you will then need to provide on getting to the UK website to apply for your indefinite leave to remain. And really, the earliest you can apply for your indefinite leave to remain is 28 days before you've been in the UK for five years. Okay, so let's say for instance, I've been in the UK for five years. It's exactly in July. I can apply from June. Okay, so 28 days, not earlier than that. Oh. How much does the ILR cost? It costs a whopping £2,885. What? And I told you that I got my decision within two working days. Literally one working day, actually, because I went for my biometrics on a Saturday and I got the decision on Tuesday. Monday is supposed to be the working day, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know if they're talking it confidently. <laughs> because now my name is in Biro. It's, no it's in permanent marker. It's no longer in pencil. <laughs> for you to get it that quick, you, so within five working days you need to uh, you need to pay for priority mm -hmm. priority is 500 pounds super priority makes you get it the next working day so get it like a monday instead of it's just the, i don't know if that makes sense <laughs> right and that's cost one thousand pounds oh. on the day that i went for so when you're applying i'll encourage you to uh when you're submitting your application i encourage you to select self-service so that you can mm -hmm. upload every document documents that i uploaded are my baby's birth certificate my current passport and my old passport the old all my brps every brps i have held i uploaded them and of course the new one as well pay slips so all the pay slips um that i have received since the beginning of my maternity leave up to dates yeah even before your appointment date you need to check your pay slip. If there is an, a new pay slip, you need to provide it and provide bank statement that reflects that payment. Okay, so I uploaded all of that. I uploaded bank statement that is reflecting all the payment that I received from my employer on maternity leave. And I uploaded a consent that allows Home Office to review my bank statement, you know, my bank, you know, my um, account. You see that I have not received any public fund anytime and I'm receiving my maternity pay. And I also uploaded a letter, employment letter from my employer stating that I am this, I've been working since this and I am still required in my employment. So please be in good, good condition, good relationship with your employer. Depending on your condition, maybe you're applying with your family, applying with your partner, you might have to add some extra documents okay but this was what i uploaded and then i just went for my appointment for your appointment you can get um, express appointment so when you get there you get attended to within 30 minutes i applied for express which was 85 pounds and we got there um my appointment was supposed to be for 10 i got there about 30 minutes earlier went in immediately immediately i got there we take i was taken in immediately to, to do my biometric and i was like freezing results and it's because i paid for express so they just took me inside Can you imagine the, how bad the weather is that see this place yeah. Now, if you want a normal regular appointment that you don't need to pay for, you need to keep checking the website and hopefully get a date. Or if you want a flexible appointment that you can just walk in at any time, I think that costs around £143. Yeah. So that's literally it. That's what I wanted to share with you. I'll be I am I'll be receiving and saying thank you to your congratulations or congratulatory messages 
in the comment section thank you guys so 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 much for riding with me thank you it's been a it's been a wide journey i think in another video i'll share my journey so far and what i have learned in this five years in this country i'm super 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 grateful to god for this for, for me being alive to experience today and i'm super grateful to you guys too for being so sweet to me <laughs> I hope that you found this video helpful. Let me know if you've got questions, drop it in the comment section. And I am not an immigration officer or immigration advisor, but as much as I'm able to help, I will respond to your questions. If not, I'll provide links for your reference. If you're yet to subscribe to this YouTube channel, kindly subscribe and turn my post notification bell on for more videos. Follow me on all my social media platforms. I'm on Instagram as proud underscore nosmj. I'm on Twitter as proud nosmj. And I'm on TikTok as nosmj01. I'm also on Facebook as nosmj. I'll see you guys in my next video. I love you.